All right, Jeff Grubb, Games Beat here. Um, back with another controller review. This one is the Steam controller. And it is interesting. Um, before I uh, really get into it, first I want to uh, apologize. I'm a little sick, so if I cough or I look scraggly, uh, it's because I just haven't had time to like do basic human things, like take care of myself. Um, so if I cough, I apologize. I feel like one's coming on just because I said the word. <coughs> See, I'm not lying. Um, but let's get into it. I don't want to waste any more of your time. It's a Steam controller. It is a thing of weirdness. Uh, you got a good look at it right there. Uh, and the first thing you're going to notice is that it only has one analog stick. Uh, right there. Second thing you're going to notice is it's got these giant gamepad, trackpad thingies. And then you might start to notice it's got the Steam logo and that the buttons are way down here, pretty low. Um, if all that stuff seems out of place to you, that's because it's out of place. Uh, we've kind of gotten to a point where controllers are standardized. The Xbox 360, was al it's almost 10 years old now, right? So we're getting, we're getting near there. Um, and that controller sort of established itself, especially on PC, um, as sort of a de facto go-to controller for everything, for every game. Every developer was kind of using that when you plug in a controller, that's what you'd get. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is strange now, 10 years on, to see something that doesn't kind of fit that mold. Because everyone that's making a controller is basically just doing their own riff on Xbox 360. You know, the Xbox One controller came out. And it was just a refinement, you know? And when you put it next to each other, like, they look like they're in the same universe. But this one, well, they look like they're maybe from a different universe. It's like, this is like a parallel dimension Xbox 360 controller. Xbox One controller. <coughs> um, let me get into more of my more detailed thoughts. Um, I've kind of touched on how it's different, but I, I don't want to glaze over that too much. It's different, and that means it's going to take time to get used to if you have spent any time using a gamepad in the last, you know, 10 years or so. So, the muscle memories you have, they're, they're useless now. You have to kind of do things differently. You can't just treat this like a right analog stick. You have to sort of learn that by, by pushing things in a certain direction and holding and holding this thing down, maybe the camera will move how you want it to in a third-person action game or something like that. And that's frustrating because, you, I mean, you go out and spend $50 on a, on a controller, uh, you kind of want, you don't want a, a learning curve with the hardware. Uh, we've, we're kind of past that point. At least I am. I'm, I'm 32. I've been playing games since I was five years old. Um, I have learned over time a sort of um, evolution of the way things have been tacked on. And... That's kind of the thing. Everything's been tacked on. For, starting from, you know, for me, for the NES controller, I messed around with the Intellivision's, like, dial pad before that. But, you know, you had a, two buttons and D-pad uh, with, the you know, the start and select. And then you add shoulder buttons on SNES and analog on Nintendo 64. And then you get dual analog from Sony on the in the DualShock. <coughs> and each on each of those steps, no one took anything away. To replace it with something else like we still have the d-pad on all these controllers um we still have shoulder buttons on all these controllers everyone's like these were good additions uh we can't take them away that they work in too many cases so for this to take away the second analog stick and replace it with something else uh it's hard for me to wrap my mind around it and i think it's going to be the case for a lot of you as well the thing is i've heard from people other people sorry other people have said they've gotten used to it um, I'm not one of them. I, I'm not used to it yet. Uh, I will say that it's not like bad in 100% of the cases. It's, it's, it's just that the second I start to fail because of the controller, I hate it. You know, and that's maybe not fair. I should maybe give it more time, but I, I, I don't really want to. I got plenty of good. I mean, I got an Xbox One Elite controller, you know, for fuck's sake. Why wouldn't I just use that? <sighs> so... The next point is is that it does work with some games. So I was playing around with it. I wasn't having a good time because I was trying it with stuff that I'm used to using dual analogs with. Uh, but then I did boot up games that only work with mouse and keyboard. And uh, I turned on Civilization V on my TV downstairs, my big screen TV. 
and I was on the couch, you know, laying back on the couch like I play console games. I don't ever play PC games like that. Uh, and I ended up playing like five hours of Civilization Civilization Five, uh, kind of on accident. I didn't mean to. I just kept going and going, and one more turn, and it was working. Everything was working fine with this, you know. The only problem was that the graphics were a little bit too small to sort of see from my couch, but that had nothing to do with the controller or the the Steam Link, really. I'm sure I could have messed around with that and made it better, but uh, that's not the point. The point is, is that this this worked for that, and if that's what this is for, if that is sort of this is a, a, a sort of singular solution for the problem of mouse and keyboard PC games which I understand I think is how it's being positioned a little bit um, then then yeah okay I get it but I at the same time I don't I don't think you can justify owning this controller and not owning one of the other ones if this is gonna be your number like your number one go-to controller I, I don't really see how that's gonna work um, the good news is that since so many games, uh, you would think, you know, you pick up a controller like this, you're like, I'm going to use it with a mouse and keyboard game. How long is that going to take for me to set that up and to get, get that working with like a game that doesn't understand, like uh, I'm using this and thinks I need to, you know, use mouse keys and might have to spend time doing bindings. The good news is Steam's already thought about this. It has a ton of settings for um, just going in and quickly selecting from the menu, uh, especially on Steam Link. It was working on Steam Link. I actually haven't tried it too much on the PC directly. Um, but just quickly getting a, uh, a, a, a sort of pre set up input map and it just you, you select it and go and if it doesn't work well you just go back there you select a different one you can use the developers one you can use ones that are popular with the community uh, you can make your own if you want it's it's all there and it's all customizable which is kind of what you come to PC gaming for so that's good <coughs> excuse me again but I think that it, I'm trying to think of any more positives. I I want to say that it generally it feels good in your hands in terms of the stick is stiff enough and responsive enough and it doesn't have any like dead wiggle in the center like you'll get on some controllers. Um, these pads actually do feel really neat. Uh, there's certain games when you have them on where it kind of feels like a track ball, like you could do this and flick it and it vibrates. There's a little motor in there, the haptic feedback. Um, and that feels super cool. Uh, I am remembering I've used the HTC Vive and the controllers for the HTC Vive are basically this broken in half. Um, and that was incredible. There was a ton of games that were using these track pads in super interesting ways. Um, so I'm kind of, maybe I'm thinking back to that and I'm applying that to here because there aren't really games and that's one of my negatives and there aren't really games that sort of take advantage of the inherent capabilities of this device. Um, but before we get to that, uh, I, I will say that just, it just, it feels okay. That's my positive statement about it. I like, I like this. This is a new ad for a standard controller. These uh, back paddles, they're just, it's just two big buttons, I think. I don't know if there's, yeah, you can't hit them independently. So yeah, it's just two big buttons. Um, but yeah, and it's kind of light and the battery seems to last a long time. <clears throat> now that I've sort of tried to ramble off any positives I could think of, let me get to the negatives. Uh, while it feels, well, it fits your hand, and that's what I mean by it feels good. At the same time, it also feels pretty cheap. Uh, the shoulder buttons are smushy. Uh, I don't feel really good when you start to press them and when you get all the way down and you click it's not satisfying the the back paddles feel wobbly and inconsequential uh, the big steam button here in the middle it doesn't really feel good until the in, the inner haptic motors click on and then that sort of response makes it feel good but when you're pressing it, it feels like maybe, I, maybe I'm not even turning it on so I'll have moments while I'm, I'm holding it down waiting for it to turn on and it doesn't turn on uh, because I'm holding it down waiting for something to happen but once you let go it's like oh, okay click and then you hear the haptic feedback <coughs> um and then like the the d-pad and stuff like this this just feels so weird I mean I mean that's not cheap but it's like pressing it down you can hear the spring and the spring sounds clunky and like it's gonna be hard to hit this accurately 
Uh, so it's kind of it's a bummer. I mean, it's, it is cheaper than the Xbox One or, or DualShock Four uh, controller right now. <coughs> uh, so fifteen bucks, you're kind of getting what you pay for. But at the same time, I just I, I want controllers that feel solid. I want controllers that feel like they're gonna last me, and these don't necessarily have that. Um, I've kind of already touched a, a bit too much on this one, so I'm not going to go any further. The other big negative is it does require you re relearn muscle memory uh, that you might have from years of playing console games or games with a controller. Uh, and that's it's not really unforgivable because if they're just trying something new, so let's give it a shot. But uh, if, if you're just kind of going out there and seeing this controller and you're saying, I need a way to play mouse and keyboard games, this is not even necessarily the best option. Uh, for sitting on a couch. You could get one of those Logitech ones that has the built-in mouse pad and everything like that. Um, I mean, this will work, though. Uh, I think, finally, and, and for me, most damningly, because they've had plenty of time to sort of do this, but I don't think there are really any games on Steam that take advantage of the inherent capabilities on here. And I was, ta I talked about this a little bit, but it just, if I'm, let me see if you can hear this. I'm flicking it, and it's and the controller's motors are vibrating. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it feels so cool. But there's no games that sort of do anything with that. So I'm just sort of like, this is a, it's a wasted opportunity. And why are you going to pay well, $50 right now, go out to the store, pay $50 for something that maybe has promise uh, for inter interesting capabilities, uh, but there's nothing there right now. Uh, at, best you, at best you wait, and at worst you never, you never get anything at all. So, it's just, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense overall. The controller's layout doesn't make a lot of sense. The buttons down here, trying to get your thumbs on them, they're just so far out of the way from where you normally would put them. Like in this hump here, kind of keeps your thumb from really reaching over there really well. <coughs> and then, there's no ecosystem to support it. There's, you know, it feels cheap. It just doesn't make sense as a $50 product. Um, that said... I don't know. I'm kind of, at the same time, I'm willing to give it time. I'm willing to see where it goes. Uh, uh, and I am going to, you know, I will get some use out of it occasionally when I want to play Civ on my TV, which, you know, maybe I'll do that once a year. If I have a sick day or something, I just want to lay on the couch and play a game like that. Uh, but I, I just don't see that as a, a common occurrence. Uh, so, yeah, that's, those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know. If you have any questions about the controller or anything I left out that you're curious about, that always happens. So let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it more. Uh, and yeah, so thanks for watching. Again, Jeff Grubb, GamesBeat. Uh, if you want more information about this or the Steam link, we have a review going up You know, with the same day as this video on GamesBeat.com. Uh, just go ahead and click on that link in the description below. And we'll get you right there. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.